Okay, so if you open up your bot from the assets folder, um, we're going to start by creating our set, which is going to be kind of a, an array of um, columns and a floor and um, lighting, uh, which we were going to use to animate in. Uh, and the only reason we're opening up the bot here is just for using him as a, a reference for scale. But before I get into all of that, I'm just going to create some more space by control clicking on the little dotted boxes there, just to give me a bit more room. So we're not going to do any animating in this at all yet. Okay, so the first thing to do is I'm going to go into my front view and I'm just going to bring back my view until I can see the robot. Um, and I'm just going to use this as a reference because the column's going to have kind of a wider base with some little shapes and kind of bevels and things going on there. Um, and to keep it reasonably regular, I'm going to use that snapping. So it will snap onto the grid. So hit the P key. I'm just going to use 2.5D snapping and I'm going to go up into my spline palette and choose a linear spline and I'm going to start about here and you'll see that as I move my cursor around I'm not letting go yet to add my first point it's snapping to the points on the grid so I'm going to add one there um, and I'm just eyeballing this to kind of get something that I like the look of so you don't have to follow the exact positions that I'm using do create something of your own uh, just something that kind of pleases your eye and just kind of plot out the points as you go and using the, the grid snapping just helps it keep regular and I, if I want the, the angle here to match the angle there then it's a good way of doing it rather than trying to eyeball it. So I'm going to go in just a little bit more here and just add a couple more points. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my upright. Now I'm going to start quite close to this um, and the reason for that is because if I back out when I get to this point you can see that the grid changes it adapts to fit the the kind of the amount I've zoomed in or out and if I then try and add a point here it's going to try and connect itself it's going to try and kind of snap to this grid which isn't very good so using the the previous grid here to make sure it's directly kind of vertical from this previous point means that I can now zoom back out and I can use the arrow key to just or the, the the move the kind of the axis tools here to bring this up and i'm going to make this quite tall and the reason is because when later on we add some lights we're going to add them down here and they're going to have a fall off distance and i don't really want to see the tops of the columns in the shot i want them to kind of fade out with the light so i'm going to take that up quite high that's probably enough but we can always go in and adjust that if we need to so i'm going to hit the space bar just to drop that tool and I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key, come into my Hypernerbs and choose a lathe. And what that does is just wraps it around uh, the, the kind of the, the vertical axis or the Y axis of our scene. So I'm just going to back out until I can see the whole thing, see what it looks like. That might be a little too chunky, but actually not so bad at the moment. Okay, so what we can do now is delete the robot. We don't need him and we can now save this scene and if we go to file save as let's go back to models and we can choose a name for this and let's call this the set i can also delete any unused materials that were with the robot so right click on the materials choose remove unused and that just tidies everything up for us okay so we've got some options with the lathe nerves here we can choose to add caps, although we don't really need to for this example, but if I wanted to, um, I could add some caps in there. Not really fussed because that will be intersecting with the floor and the top point we'll never see. So what else can we do? We can change the rotation subdivisions so we can really smooth this off or we can bring it back around so we could have a, a triangular column if we wanted or we could just up that one and have a square column or anywhere, you know, any kind of level of divisions you want after that. Now I'm going to say 24 is fine. Isopalm subdivisions, I'm just going to drag that down to two. Don't really need anything there. Um, I'm actually quite happy with the overall shape of this, but if you want to adjust it, then you can zoom in with your front view and choose the spline and you can see the points here. If you're finding it difficult to kind of find them and see them, um, just because this second line 
may be throwing you off, then just click on the tick on the lathe nerves and you'll be back to your original spline view. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it as it is like this. Okay, so what we need to do now is apply a material to it. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to control click and drag on that lathe nerves just to create a duplicate. And in that duplicate, I'm going to right click it and I'm going to go to add to new layer. And in the layer browser, I'll just call this spares bin. I always like to have a spares bin, especially if I can spell it correctly. And I'm going to hide that from the manager because I don't need it and from the renderer and the viewport because I don't want to accidentally have that pop up in any renders. Um, but what, it's, what it does is means that I've got a duplicate of this that I can go back to at any time. And I can now take this one, which I'm happy with, uh, and I can press C to make that an editable object, which I'm going to rename Pillar. Now, I am pretty happy with this, and I'm pretty sure it's the one I'm going to use. But just in case down the line we decide actually you know, we need this to be taller or we want to adjust it in some way, then it's worth having that extra just hidden there so that we can go back to it if we should want to. Now, one thing I am going to do here is I'm going to change the fong angle, which is smoothing things off just a little bit too much to my liking. So I'm just going to bring that back to there. So I'm on 44 degrees here. And this is all going to be dependent on the shape of your model and where you placed your points. Uh, but I've just taken that back so it's not trying to smooth off some of these edges because I don't really want that. OK, so let's get to the materials. So I'm going to double click in the material manager to create a new material. I'm just going to go down to the illumination and change the model from blind to fong, um, which gives a slightly crisper appearance to it. So I'm going to go into color and I'm going to go to load image. And if you look in uh, your assets folder, uh, let's have a look where we've got this. So milg nine, if you look in assets, you should find texture or text folder there. And I'm going to put the floor stone diff, which is diffuse into this here and you can see we've got the color now it's called floor it's also used for the pillars because it's the same material we're going to apply to the floor of the the room as well as the pillars so I'm just going to go to uh, normal and I'm going to go load image and I've got a floor stone NRM which is my normal I'm not going to copy that into the directory like this is fine and um, I'm going to leave all the settings there as default specular I'm going to reduce a little bit. I'm going to make it wider, but a little bit taller. Um, I'm not going to have any reflection on this, although I could if I wanted to make the, the stone slightly shiny, I could do that. But I think for the render overheads, it's not really necessary. Um, and a little bit of specular will help there anyway. Now I can also add a little bit of displacement here. Um, so I'm going to go back into load image and I'm going to use the bump PSD that I've got for this, uh, which you can see here has just a little bit of variation in it. Now I don't want it to be quite so tall. I'm going to turn this down to just three centimeters. I'm going to turn on sub polygon displacement, but I'm going to reduce it down to about two. Now, when this is applied to the model, um, just because of the way the model works, we might find that we get some hard edges as it's trying to displace out from the faces of each of these polygons. So it's important to turn on round geometry for an object like this. Now let's call this stones. That's fine because that will work for both the floor and the pillars. And I'm just going to drag that on to my pillar object. Now if I back out a little bit, you can see this isn't quite right. This is using UV mapping or UVW mapping, which might work. But let's increase the amount of tiles until we get to somewhere we like the look of. And I think that's probably a little bit better. Let's just check in at the bottom end here, see how this is looking. Now the scale you use for this, for the tiles, uh, is completely up to you. It all depends exactly on what you want it to look like. But I'm gonna go for eight there and I'm just gonna round this to two for this section here as well. And we can reuse this tag when we add a floor. Okay, so we've got our first pillar done. Now in the scene, we're going to have a few rows of pillars and also some lights uh, and I did consider 
having these kind of randomized slightly to add a bit of visual interest but when i was thinking about it i thought actually i can't think of an example where a building would be made with columns that aren't kind of regimented and i think that actually we'll just use some interesting camera angles and varying the intensity of some of the lights to help with that so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go into my mograph menu add a cloner and i'm going to change this from linear to grid array i'm going to make the pillar a child of the cloner and you can see we've got our first clones there now they're not particularly well arranged but that's fine what i do want to do is reduce the number in the y-axis because I don't want them kind of stacking up but I'm going to increase them on both the X and Z so I'm going to go for let's say probably seven and we'll try let's just try seven again just to see how it looks I'm going to increase the distance that these are apart so 2000 isn't quite enough let's make this 5000 just spin around so we can see what we're doing still not enough and this is in centimeters by the way so if you're using a different uh, setting here if you're working in meters then you might find that the the figure you're typing in is different that's fine let's try 10,000 okay 10,000 that way and 10,000 in the Z as well I'm going to increase this in the Z I'm going to actually make this let's try 15,000 I think that's better because that gives us some nice opportunities for some parallax if we were to bring a camera across tracking the motion of our robot then that could look pretty cool um, and really help the shot to look nice especially if we have some kind of varying pools of light here okay so that's looking not too bad not too bad at all and um, what i am going to do is just because when i was down in that lower view i want to do something similar to what i did with that point at the top where I lifted it up so I'm going to go back to the pillar and I'm going to take the points here I'm going to go into my side view I'm going to take my marquee selection and make sure that only select visible elements is turned off and I'm going to select all of the top points there and I'm just going to rotate myself around in my perspective view just until I can see what's going on there I'm going to take my move tool and just using these as a reference I'm going to lift these points right up and that will all then flow through and affect all the different clones. So I'm going to take that to about there. Now you can see that it has stretched the texture texture very slightly but doesn't actually look too bad. Uh, we can go in and adjust it if we want to. Um, but it's possibly not necessary. So I'm actually going to leave that at 8. I think that's still fine. We didn't move it too much. Okay, so let's back out by pressing H so we can see our whole scene here we've got our pillars sorted out and I think what next we should probably do is add a floor so I'm not going to use a floor object I'm going to use a plane just because that will help with the mapping now with the width segments and height segments we only need one in each it just has to be one polygon and I'm just gonna type in here 20,000 not 200,000, 20,000, just to see how that's looking. And I'll go for 20,000 there as well. Now, I might go slightly longer in the z-axis and a little bit narrower in the width here. Um, but I will have it overlapping our area quite a lot, just so that if our camera ends up at some point being kind of over here, then there's still floor to be shown, although that's doubtful but it's worth just kind of doing to plan in for the future now I'm just going to back out a little bit and I'm going to apply the stones material to that plane as well and you can see that this is far too big uh, UV mapping or UVW mapping is fine but I'm going to turn the tiling amount up to 10 which is probably still way too small and now I've got it somewhere closer to what I want I can just zoom in to an area that's showing both the floor and the pillars and I think we'll try and get these to match reasonably closely uh, let's try 16 and 16 again now this, that's looking a little bit better I might go just a couple higher let's try 18 there I think that's looking a bit better and for the width of the tiles 
yeah that's looking quite good now the maps that we used here in this material are included in the assets folder so you can grab them there but don't forget you can use any textures you want you don't have to use these um, but I think it's probably worth supplying them just in case you want to follow along exactly with what I'm doing okay so that's the kind of the first part of the set sorted out now I'm just going to hit Control or command s to save this I'm not going to save incremental for this particular version I don't think I need to um, I'm very happy with what I've got so far and uh, it's now time to add some lighting so what I'm going to do is turn off the cloner and I'm going to hide my plane which I'm just going to rename to floor um, so I just have my original uh, pillar here to use as a reference for um, making my light so to make my light I'm going to first of all add a sphere to the scene now I'm going to change my display to lines so I can see the two together now I think that's maybe a touch too big so I'm going to turn that down to a radius of 80 that's still probably a little little too big let's try 70 um, maybe even a touch less okay we'll just round that to 50 and segments I'm going to turn to 16 oops 16 just so that it eases some of the polygon count in the scene and um, because we'll keep render perfect turned on so this will render as a sphere anyway and we'll call this let's call this the lamp because this is going to be our kind of global or, or bulb kind of object here I'm going to make a new material for it and this is going to have some luminosity but first of all let's just give this some color a slightly warm color like so and in the luminance I'm going to add a gradient and I'm going to turn the type from 2DU to 2DV and you can see that at the bottom we've got the black here so I'm going to go in here I'm going to put in a, a warmer color there um, and I'm just going to swap these around because I want the brightest part to be at the bottom like so I'm going to turn off specular now at this point if we were going to see this quite quite close up I might be tempted to put in a little bit of reflection and a bit of Fresnel reflection as well just to kind of help to sell the realism of the the object but I don't think it's worth it for this particular um, example um, I don't think we're ever going to see it close enough to have to worry about that kind of thing and it will just increase our render time stupidly because I'm going to be duplicating the light quite a lot so I'm going to drop the lamp material onto the lamp object which I'm just going to drag to the bottom of my queue here and I'm going to control click and drag and to just make a duplicate and I'm going to rename this to shade I'm also just going to drop that material okay so now I'm going to hide my pillar just for a minute so I can work on this back in grid shading mode like so so I've got my shadow my shade even with an extra letter there and I'm going to hit T to increase the size of it just a touch doesn't have to be too much and if I go to all my views here just so and press S with the cursor over the view so we can see what we're doing now the shade I'm going to hit C to turn this into a polygon object and I'm going to take my marquee selection tool and I'm going to select all of those points there um, and that's when I now delete these this is going to leave from this row or from this edge loop here upwards still available to us like so so what I want to do here is add some thickness now you can use a plugin for this or you can use the extrude tool so you can hit D and you could drag and then you could start creating caps and changing your offset and bevels and everything but a much quicker way of doing it is to find the make thicker plugin um, if you do a Google search for make thicker then you'll find that you can just add that to your plugins folder and this makes a lot lot faster job of doing this so I can just hit OK um, and you can see that this is all done the caps are all created and it's all welded into one object all in one click well two clicks if you include selecting the plugin now this is not intersecting at all with the bulb at the moment um, and 
in reality you might think actually it'd be better off to have it slightly closer but actually in this case I don't think that's too necessary and um, we're actually going to add a real world or I say a real world a real cinema 4d light in here as well um, and if you just look in the view here you can see what's going on that's right in the center of the world and in the center of the glow bulb but because we've added that light you can see that because it's inside our geometry it's now not affecting anything so we need to make that light ignore the bulb so that the light will pass through the bulb object or the lamp object and be able to cast shadows from the shade and then all the other elements in the scene so with the light selected there just go to your attributes manager choose scene and exclude we want it to exclude the lamp so the lamp won't affect the output of the light and if I now just hide the pillar from renderer because we're actually inside the pillar and I just do a quick render region but I'll just turn off GI first you can see that that's still there the bulb is lighting now if I was to uh, just kind of scoot around here um, uh, if, GI, if GI was turned on then we'd see some kind of let's just zoom in you can see where the inside of the lampshade is uh, is being lit by the light because it's not excluding the lamp anymore if GI was turned on we'd also have some extra light in the render bouncing off the edge of the shade there just because the material applied to our lamp object is luminous so I hope that all makes sense okay so what we're going to do is take the light and make that a child of the lamp I'm going to make the lamp a child of the shade so we've got the three elements there and I'm going to add one more object I'm just going to bring back my pillar and I'm going to go into either my front or my side view doesn't really matter which and I'm just going to add a spline which will be the cable for this lamp to hang from I'm going to use a B spline and I'm going to start it off in the center of the lamp shade just beneath the surface okay now I'm just going to zoom back out quite a long way just to make sure that I put the points in the relevant places so I'm going to take my spline and just hang it about so what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go back to my normal selection tool I'm going to select that center point there zoom right in and I'm just going to back it out to one side a little bit and I'll probably do the same in this view as well if I can find where I am just back it off just a little uh, and that just adds just a tiny bit of interest now our top point is right up there in, in the ceiling level that we won't really see anyway so that's good um, I'm going to add a sweep nerves to my scene and I'm going to drop that spline under it and now I need to make a profile so I'm just going to use a simple circular profile which I'll drop under the sweep nerves above the spline there now just so we can see what's going on at the moment I'm just going to turn off that light and this brings back the kind of default scene lighting that Cinema 4D gives us um, and I can then go into the circle and I can say actually I only want that to be two centimeters wide not two meters that might be maybe a touch small and just decrease that until we get to let's say four centimeters is looking good now I'm just going to make a very simple black material very nearly black material um, with some quite sharp highlights on it again I'm going to go to illumination and turn that from blin to fong and we'll call this shade and cable just renaming things so I know what they are uh, if I ended up with you know a hundred materials in here then I'd like to name them similar to what the objects are that they're going to be applied to so we'll call this one the cable and we'll make the shade actually we'll take the cable down to the bottom here I'll close down that section there and I'm going to drag the material onto the cable and I'm going to control click and drag onto the shade so that that material is now applied to both those objects which I'm going to select the whole of the components that make up the lamp or one kind of 
individual hanging lamp and I'm going to hold down alt or option hit G and we'll call this hanging hanging lamp that's fine I think I think there we go I'm just going to open it up and turn the light back on okay so we've got our scene here and you can see that I've just hit H to zoom out to the extents of the scene and if I turn the floor and the cloner back on you can see what we've got going on now rather than use another cloner to replicate what we did with the columns um, I'm going to do the lights in a slightly different way and I'm going to go into my top view hit H just to zoom out reasonably well and I'm going to turn my display onto just quick shading is fine actually I might use Gurud shading uh, because that will show me where the pools of light are hanging um, now I want to have an area fall off for these lights so actually what I might do is just go back into my perspective view and do this before we start messing around with clones and duplicates of the light so I'm going to go into my hanging lamp select my light go into shadows and turn on shadow maps because I want those and I want to turn the color of that light into a similar warm color that we put on the material now I want to change the details of fall off to inverse square which is more kind of accurate than you might have otherwise and I'm just going to increase this and I'm eyeballing this a little bit to make sure that it can hang and light up just the pillars around it and I think that's probably looking quite close I'll just make this 1200 and go back to general intensity at 100 for now is probably fine what I'm going to do is after I've duplicated them I'm going to go in and I'm going to vary the intensity of some of them just because I think that will look a little bit more interesting okay so back into the top view and we can see now if I zoom in here you can just see the edges of these pillars starting to come together now I can't quite tell where things are in Gura shading view so I am going to use quick shading just to place them and I'm going to take this first lamp and I'm going to just press P to make sure no snapping is on I'm going to place the first one just here so it's kind of in the in the center of these four columns here I'm going to control click and drag and I'm going to take this one over to this set of pillars but rather than being next to it I'm going to stagger them so that one is going to go there I'm going to take both of those lamps control click and drag to duplicate the pair of them and I'm going to drag those up to that kind of a location so you can see we've got kind of this staggered effect going on and I'll control click and drag those again just to bring out one more copy and you can see now that we've got a nice staggered effect going on here now I want lamp number five, probably number three and number one. So I'm control clicking to duplicate those. I'm just going to give myself a bit more room and I may just duplicate those across like so. Now if we look in this view, we can see what we've got going on and I think that's probably looking quite good. Okay, so what we need to do now is to go into a either a side or a front view select all of those hanging lamps and raise them up now what I'm looking for here is to not have the fall off going too far up so that the kind of pillars in this view when we've got cameras in the scene will just disappear up into the darkness I also want them to be able to light the robots head quite well and the robot is about the height of this bottom area of the column so I want to make sure that the lamps go to not too far above that so he can move through some nice kind of pools of warm warm light that uh, kind of help him feel a bit safer as he moves through the room. I think that's going to look pretty good. Okay, so I've got that. What I'm going to do now is, now I've got all of these hanging lamps selected, I'm just going to right click and add to new layer and I'm going to change the layer color to something a bit brighter um, and I'm also going to choose that kind of an orange color just to replicate warm light just as a little visual tip for me more than anything else and I'm going to call these this layer lighting 
I may add some more lights at later on. I'm not sure yet, but if we do, it's worth having a lighting layer there for that. Now I can hide these from either the viewport or the renderer or the the uh, manager up here. Um, and I'm going to hide them because I don't want a big list of something that's all the same up there. Um, next, I'm going to take the floor and our cloner, which is actually going to be renamed to pillars. I'm going to select both of them and add them to a new layer. So right click, add to new layer. Let's call this set. I'm just going to change that green because it's horrible. I prefer to use very saturated bright colors for my layer tags here. Um, it's not really necessary, but it helps me kind of keep sense of my scene. Okay, so what have we got going on here? We've got all of our lights and they're all at the same kind of intensity level. So what we need to do is go in and adjust a few of those up and down just to get kind of hot spots and cooler spots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the search tool up here in the object manager. And I'm going to type in lights with a or light with a, a capital L and that will go through everything in our scene and if it's got those letters in it it will bring it up. So I'm going to pick a few at random. So I'm going to choose that one, that one and that one and I'm going to go into my attributes and I'm going to increase the brightness or the intensity to 130. I'm going to choose that one, that one and that one and I'm going to decrease those down to uh, about about 45 is probably right. That's fine by me. So we've got three different intensities there. If you want to create more variation in there, then please do. Uh, but it's not necessary if you don't really want to. Uh, you don't even have to do that stage if you don't want. But and even now looking at it, I can see there's a hot spot here, here and here. Um, and other areas aren't quite so hot. So at this point, I'm going to just save my scene again as set. And then we can move on to the next video where we'll start adding some animation in and we'll bring the robot back in and start applying some motions to him. We'll use some of the motion clips. Um, I'll also teach you about the pivot tool, things like that as well. Um, but for now, this is looking pretty cool. Um, I'm happy with that and it's going to look really nice as we get some cameras set up in here and we can start moving through it. Okay, so make sure you've saved your scene and we'll come back in the next video.